orchestration composer. First question is, you might have is, is what is an orchestrator? And how does that differ than being a composer? Well, the short answer is composers write the music and orchestrators will decide which instruments play those parts. Now, most composers are orchestrators and vice versa. It's not always a clear-cut line, it's particularly older composers. They did their own orchestrations. But most of this room who, in this room who compose will probably do their own orchestrations. But in Hollywood, in places like Hollywood, it's different. And why is it different? It's because composers don't have time to completely finish a score. They may have as little as six weeks, in some cases, to compose, orchestrate, and record a 90-minute film score. Now, this short time frame is, because I know you're all familiar with this, but music is the last thing that gets added to a movie. You know, everything has to be shot at money. Everything has to be shot, and before the composer can really finish writing music for a scene, he has to, has to be finished to be edited. Sometimes editings get cut to the very end, the composer has to rewrite the music, and it's a big pain, and you know what. So, the composer really can't finish it until the final product is done. He can work on themes, or she can work on themes, of course, but the final product is the last process. So, this time crunch can be, can be even more acute with television. It is more acute, particularly when a, a new episode might be aired every week. Somebody's got to come up with, you know, 40 minutes or, or something like that of music. You know, that, and this is a, a, a crunch. So, this, because of this, historically, composers have developed a situation where they sketch out their music in different, you know, uh, degrees of detail, and then an orchestrator will finish the, the filling in the details of that sketch. Now, what are the orchestrator's jobs? Some of them include doubling parts that need more weight, adding percussion parts, dividing string parts, filling out chords for the brass, lightning solo passages for the woodwinds. Orchestrators do not add melodies. You know, and we often don't choose which solo voices play. I do orchestrations for Michael Giacchino, as you guys remember me talking about last year. I done some for Chris Young, <coughs> but more, much more for Michael. And it's not, I'm not unique. I don't choose to give a clarinet a solo for here or there. I mean, that's his choice. He can write it there. I mean, I'm gonna have to edit it for him, put it in there. But we, we do have some freedom in, in, in some ways. It's a, it's a funny kind of freedom, but there, I mean, there, is, there is creativity as an orchestrator, believe it or not. What do you mean by the last thing? Um, <coughs> solo passages? Well, that, what I mean by that is uh, sometimes, um, you know, you can, um, if there's a solo line written or two voices, sometimes, you know, we can line into one voice and then see how that goes for him. Or sometimes, uh, if the solo part is written for one part, the reverse of that actually will write it for four parts. Like, particularly in horns. You know, often Michael is has eight horns. So he might write the passage, maybe written in the, in the scratch, he gives me two horns, but I'll say, well, let's fill it out. So it's lightning and filling out, too, in that sense. Yes? So with that in mind, filling out for the brass, how much leeway do you have to add tension and all that sort of stuff in there? Like, well, you know, you, you want to keep to the harmonic, you know, yeah. palette that you're using in, in the passage. I mean, I wouldn't... I would try, if it's dissonant passage, if it's obviously dissonance, then I would, I could add some dissonant notes to it. But if it's very tonal, very diatonic, I'm not going to add, make it the seventh chord, you yeah, know, right. or, or something like that. You know, I mean, I, you know, I might be able to add a ninth, perhaps, or something like that. But, um, you know, you, you want to keep, that, that's kind of their, that's their bulk in, really. Okay. And that's, that's what they, at least my work with, you know, Michael, I mean, it, orchestrators in the olden days, it's a whole different bulk in. I mean, the stories that we can hear about, especially in television. You know, the composer, you know, whistles a theme and the orchestra, you know, give you 30, you know, 50 bars of that. You know, so that kind of element it, it is much different than what we're talking about now. It's particularly with John Williams stuff, which is, you know, very clearly done. And I've spoken to several of his orchestrators, and, you know, his work is, is you know, immaculate. So the, the work is not that much filling in on his stuff. Definitely.